hi Dana, thank you for being here with us today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I was really looking forward to our conversation. Me too. Uh, Dana is in New York and we are in Toronto and I'm very happy to have her. I met Dana actually online through a friend, a common friend of ours who's actually in France and who Dana actually only happened to also meet via other friends, I think, in technology and online. Exactly. Um, I don't believe you and Tariq have even met yet uh, in person. person. No. <laughs> and neither have we, but that's the beauty of um, technology that it connects people from all around the world. And I think one of the more interesting things of the silver lining of the pandemic is that it forced us online and it forced a lot of people to actually explore the opportunities in it or on it. I sometimes forget which is the correct uh, <laughs> preposition. Uh, my name is Larmin Keen and I'm the founder of Mikey Guy. We are a re discovery and recommendation hub for, for the 50 plus demographics. We like to promote preventative wellness concepts as well as companies that are doing innovation things to keep us uh, with purpose and with longer longevity. And what we mean by longevity is with longer health span, matching as one of your mentors says, Dana can, uh, lifespan to health span. Because the key is not how long you live. Um, for those that want to live to 150, it's great, but the more important part is how long you live the good years. Uh, purpose, engagement, community are pillars of that. And I'm very excited to have Dana here because her company and her startup is all based on that. Dana, if you could tell us more about what you're building and um, I give you the floor, as they say. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. So, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about Aldera. Honestly, nothing makes me happier. So, um, we, you know, we saw an opportunity for Aldera. My co-founders and I founded Aldera in the way, in the form it is today, um, in March, actually. So, we're quite new. And it was the convergence of several big factors that got us to it. Uh, one, uh, we have been looking at the aging space um, and uh, in particular, how do we increase our healthy lifespan and uh, how do we use our entire life, lifetime as, as a value add to the world? We've been looking into that space for two years. So we knew that there is this opportunity uh, to really engage mentors, uh, elders um, as access to society. And uh, we found that their wisdom is one of the most important resources that we can give to the next generation. So we had our mentor group and then separately we had the kids group and the kids group, um, one of the biggest needs they have is to, to learn what's called now uh, emotional, uh, emotional and soft learning, to learn soft skills, to build resilience. So we had these two cohorts uh, that were completely separated. And, um, and this was interesting because for the length of humanity, um, the elders always took care of the kids while the parents were at work. So there was always this intergenerational, um, beautiful relationship happening there. So we had the kids that needed help. We had the mentors who, because of COVID, now were isolated um, and really wanted to be part of the solution. We had COVID exacerbating the problem. And then we had Zoom and online video, just like you mentioned, um, as a solution. So when these four things came together, they created Aldera. Uh, and what we do at Aldera is that we pair vetted mentors, and we have a very, very specific and, and stringent vetting process that we go through. So we pair vetted mentors um, with kids from around the world uh, for story time, conversation, uh, activities, and um, really whatever they, they feel like doing together. And this core service is encompassed in a community uh, that we're building. It's, it's really the first intergenerational global community. And um, you know it, it kind of came to life in the past few months by um, not only, the mentors are not only focused on how they can be better mentors and they have subgroups on how to deal with certain things and do certain activities, but, uh, but there are now subgroups of they're coming together to help us scale and build Aldera even better globally. So um, we could not be happier to have to have started Aldera during COVID. You know, it's the silver lining of, of our past nine months, if you want. And uh, it's something that we hope to, to give to the next generation and, and really create 
uh, a synergy again? Um, for me, this speaks a lot because I was born in Mexico and our abuelito, abuelita are a huge part of uh, growing up. I think you and I had this conversation before uh, because you are from Transylvania and you grew up with your grandparents. I've, I've heard, I mean, I've, I've seen this in other talks you've had and you also told me this story. And I know that in different cultures, your grandparents have diff played different roles in your lives. In uh, Latin American culture, they are integrated in the family and they, you look for them for wisdom. With your parents, uh, you're having a difficult time, you go to abuelito, abuelita, and I think it's really beautiful, the matching of putting kids and having those role models. Maybe they already have their grandparents, but having that opportunity. Um, I want to know, I want to find out more how you're using, tell us about a bit about your background and also how you're using your background in AI to power this global community. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my background is I was born and raised in Transylvania in Romania. So I was raised with the European sensitivity of, of being incredibly thankful and grateful to have elders as mentors around me. And then I moved to the United States for university and I picked up like the American work hustle. Uh, so those two converged in me my entire career. And I, I pursued a career um, in advertising and data, but really in building relationships. Um, and eventually that culminated with, um, with uh, you know, understanding because I lost one of my main elders who was my mother figure here in New York, I suddenly understood the gift that I have been given uh, by having these mentors help me make decisions and guide my decision making in my life. Anywhere from like what job to take and what investments to make and how to negotiate different things and who to date. Um, so I realized I had been given such a gift and that gift was incredibly valuable to me. I don't know how I would navigate my life without it. And it was really valuable for them too, because we had this symbiotic relationship. So that's really what, what was the um, the start behind Aldera. I wanted to make this type of relationship available to everyone who needs it. Um, and guess what? Both relationships, both generations have shown an incredible appetite globally. Today we're in 17 countries. Kids sign up for Aldera, they sign up to talk to a mentor from 17 countries, which is incredible. It's also fascinating when we deal with time zones, uh, but that's that's the challenge we took on. Um, so so that's a, that's the start of Eldera. That's how we got here. Now, how my background uh, comes into it, in addition to in addition to having this this very deep rooted respect uh, and admiration for our elders, um, that is helping me today. Today, I'm guided by elders to to build Eldera better. Right. Um, it's coming from the inside out. Um, but my background in data really took me on a path towards AI. And in particular, I started getting very interested a few years ago in how can we use AI for good? Because there's a lot of scary conversations around AI. And you know, I truly believe that AI um, can be both good and bad for humanity, just like nuclear power. It can both provide clean energy and, and create enormous destruction. So I took it upon myself to think about how, what is the highest uh, purpose of technology and AI? And I, I fundamentally believe that the way AI, and I, I talk about AI in a, in, in a very broad stretch, because I don't believe what we have right now is AI. I don't believe we have artificial intelligence now. I believe what we have is IA, intelligent algorithms. But how can we use these algorithms to allow us to be more human again? You know, in the past 50, 100 years, as humans, we took on tasks that are repetitive or analytical that don't necessarily take full advantage of our gifts. They don't take advantage of our creativity and of our wisdom. And I believe that those tasks should be automated so that humans can focus on what we do best and what makes us happiest because that drives that drives our species. Um, so I wanted to see how we can use AI to rebuild some of the fractures in society, to rebuild these relationships, and in particular focused on the intergenerational relationships because 
I truly believe that if a kid has access, and it's not just I who believe this, uh, the Harvard, uh, there's a Harvard study on child development, but that if a kid has access to a trusted relationship with a non-parental adult, that builds resilience in them later in life. And guess what? Resilience is so much more valuable for our society and our humanity than, than learning things by heart is. Okay, so that's, uh, that's really how we see it from the kids' perspective. From the mentor's perspective, John Hopkins University, together with uh, one of what, two of my personal heroes and mentors, Linda Fried and Mark Friedman, um, uh, ran the study how elders volunteering with children uh, decreases and in some uh, cases reverses cognitive decline. Um, so from our perspective, Eldera is a win-win-win all around, and we're just honored to be the ones to be able to, to bring this to the world. Well, I mean, um, having a purpose, like reading a book to a child or knowing that you have this time that you're going to meet with them and making that commitment is so important, and that's beautiful. Tell us. Tell us a bit, we want to know exactly what would be the process from the child with the parent side and the process of like the mentor. They sign up and you tell, I mean, which countries are allowed for both sides and how do you, you don't have to tell us the, the vetting process, but how do you match them? Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, well, uh, let's start with, with the mentors because the mentors are really what drive everything at Eldera. Um, so the mentors um, find out about us, frankly, it's all word of mouth right now. And they sign up to our website. And when they sign up, we ask them several very specific questions. We ask them about their background. Um, we ask them about their availability. We ask them about their superpower uh, and if they have educational experience. And there's, there's a, a string of questions that we ask to build a profile for the mentors. And where, where algorithms start coming in and they start being fun is that we're looking at not just what self-express, what you write in, but how you write it and when you write it and how long you take to write it. And all of those form a, a pretty accurate picture that we have of you. And that's very important because um, our job at Eldera is to create the platform, the connections and the safety net around building these intergenerational relationships. So once you sign up, we put you through a background check, uh, we criminal background check, we onboard and train all the mentors, we record videos, the conversations, and the parent pretty much is always in the room, somewhere in the room. So that's very important to us because, you know, our goal at Eldera and probably what keeps us up at night is safety. Um, so we're thinking about every single way we can keep both sides very safe. Uh, so that's on the mentor side. On the parent side, parents find out about Aldera from other parents generally. So we're now in 17 countries and there's actually a reason to that. Very early on, uh, this young uh, reporter, uh, her name is Nora and she's 10 years old. She found out about Aldera, signed up and then wrote a piece in Time for Kids about her experience. And she ended her experience saying that Aldera was like an escape from quarantine for her. And what, oh, that's so sweet. That's the kind of testimony that you need. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm a mush, so I cry every other day. And um, that, was, that was such a beautiful thing. And because of that, parents around the world find out about us. So when parents sign up, we need to know a little bit about them and about their kid. And again, we use the same process to create a holistic view into their profile so that we can match them with the best mentor that is going to make both of their lives better. Because ultimately, when we started Aldera in the middle of the pandemic, four days after schools closed, our goal was our goal was to make someone's day better. And hopefully we stay sane in the process just because we keep ourselves busy building this. And um, and I think we've, we've accomplished at least number one, I'm not sure about number two, but number one, we have accomplished. And uh, we now know, um, from our community that Aldera's number one value is joy. It's pure, unadulterated joy on both sides. And every Aldera match is completely unique. 
that's that's the beauty about it. Um, we don't prescribe what what you focus on. We give tips and tools and and everything that you need to create your unique relationship. So to give you an example, one of our matches, um, it's um, the mentor is a professor in Chicago, and the mentee uh, is a twelve year old boy in South Korea, and. Uh, to one month, just over one month into their uh, their mentoring relationship, they the mentor um, encouraged the kid to write a book. And uh, the mentor had written many books at that point, um, and he knew to use uh, different free platforms to write the book. Long story short, uh, the book is now available on Amazon. It's called Beautiful Theorems That Changed Mathematics. Please look it up because all of the proceeds from the book sale go to a pediatric cancer uh, organization. And what a beautiful relationship. So the mentee has published the book. That's uh, amazing. We're going to have to for sure share that with the audience. He, the link. he shared, published the book at 12 and the mentor um, completely changed this kid's life. You know, so. so um, then I assume that there's an ongoing relationship between mentor and mentee, correct? 92 to 93% of all of the matches turn into weekly conversations. So we don't even think of them as anything else right now. If they don't turn into weekly conversations, we messed up somehow. Um, so they turn into weekly conversations that we just support with technology and tools and tips and tricks. And um, so you're right. This is why these relationships develop really deep and trusting. And, you know, because, because we, um, we have these uh, relationships, uh, we build these relationships, um, we realized that um, mentors started reaching out to us and said, you know, you founders are great, but we really want to talk to each other uh, to find out what the others are doing uh, to be better mentors. So that gave birth to our community which started as mentor council uh, and they meet every two weeks and they tell us how to be better at building Eldera, which we love. Um, and then our mentor council came out our private platform that we built for them because they wanted an opportunity to share ideas and talk to each other in between mentor council. So now we have an incredibly vibrant community of mentors who share their wisdom amongst them. They share it with us and they're active every day, every hour, I see new things coming up. Um, so, so when I said that mentors really drive Aldera, they are at the core of everything we build. Our job is to listen to them and prioritize the product pipeline. And that's how the magic happens. So speaking of product, product pipeline, what is the product pipeline? Now, I mean, that aspect of them being able to connect with each other is already a massive thing in building a community. Um, what, other things, what, what other things are you going to roll out and which other countries are mentors going to be able to sign up from? So thank you for asking me that question. That's a very important question because we have a very stringent vetting process. We are only accepting mentors uh, from the United States right now. Um, that being said, we do accept expat mentors, uh, but we put them through a social security criminal background check. Uh, so as long as you have a social security number, you can live anywhere in the world and sign up with us. And we would love that because we have kids all over the world. Um, so please do so. We do not yet uh, accept non-American mentors because we're still working through what the vetting process will be for the different countries. And it is unique country to country. Uh, so that's, that's certainly something that's on our plate um, for, for the next 12 months because we want to open up and welcome mentors from all around the world without sacrificing any of our safety standards. Yeah, I mean, you're in the US, so obviously you know everything about how to do things properly. If I recall, one of your co-founders is also in the legal world or was it's a lawyer, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's um, a prosecutor. <laughs> well, she would know everything about how to keep everything very um, by the book, which is so important when you're dealing with children. Exactly. Um, so I assume also when we speak about that is it is the parents who are managing the entire and on the mentee side, it is the adults that are managing that relationship, correct? 
Absolutely. Um, the mentees are not allowed to sign up with us. Uh, only the parents are allowed to sign up or a legal guardian. Um, but so far, we really have just seen uh, parents sign the kids up. Um, you know, our relationship is with the parent. Um, and, uh, and we're very strict about that. And um, what is the age requirement to be a mentor? Okay, so for the mentors, I know your community starts at 50 plus, <laughs> um, but based on, on everything that we've worked on and we researched, uh, we want our mentors to have at least six decades of life experience and wisdom under their belt. And to say that we start at, at six decades at 60, but we have mentors up into their nineties. And I would say, half of our mentor group is still working in some fashion and half is retired um, and they both enjoy it tremendously it's also half our grandparents and half are not and they taught us that the mentor mentee relationship is very different than the grandparent relationship um, because the kids are more uh, open without having the the background of the of the grandparents but it is feeding the grandparent relationship. So um, for instance, our mentors now know how to hack Zoom better than we do because the kids teach them. So they're co-creating art on Zoom, which is beautiful. So then they take those skills and what they learn about TikTok and all these different things and filters, the cutest thing I've seen is mentors get on Zoom and somehow they use filters on Zoom. Like they use like, all kinds of things. I've never seen that happen. They know how to use them better than we do now. And they apply that with their own grandkids. So guess what? Now they're the coolest grandparent ever. Um, but yeah, so they, they, you know, we have mentors who talk to kids in Kuwait or uh, South Korea or Colombia, and um, they learn about their cultures and they learn how to say their own name in those languages or how to write it. It's, it's really, really incredible to see the beauty and depth of the relationships that are being formed at Aldera. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the most important part is also the idea that these people can share their knowledge of all these decades that sometimes go, you feel like it goes into the void because people don't have those um, ways to do it. And what better way to do it than the next generation? And speaking of next generation, what is the age group um, that children can start at and it goes until what age for the mentee? Great. So on the mentee side, uh, we started with five to 15. That okay. being said, we do have a few four-year-olds and we do have a few 16, 17 year olds too. Um, we're not very strict about it. Um, a few of the things that, you know, they have to be able to, to sit in front of Zoom for 20 to 30 minutes. They have to, you know, I want to say that they have to be able to speak English um, so that they can have a conversation. Um, but a lot of them are getting, their English is getting so much better just speaking to someone uh, who lives here. Um, it's okay if they're shy because our mentors are amazing at developing relationships because their generation knows how to do that. So, you know, we call it the 20 minute effect at Aldera. The first call, the first 20 minutes, it's like pulling teeth. Uh, sometimes from the kids, because the kids are trying to figure out like, wait a minute, is this for school? Am I getting graded? What's happening here? And then they start opening up. So I think from, from, for the parents to know is that really we look at five to 15, I think are, are really the majority of our mentees are from 10 to 15, um, you know, because I think young teenagers struggle with a lot of pressures. And having a friend on the other side where they can talk about um, their lives and books and school and everything that their dreams and what they're hoping to become is incredibly valuable to them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, having an opportunity also to discuss subjects with other people outside of your family or friends who you might be able to tell them things that you don't feel com comfortable telling your own family. Um, so it's a 20 minute conversation each time or, um, you know, we say that it's, um, people sign up for 30 minutes, um, okay. but I encourage them to always keep the hour free. We know some people talk for an hour and a half, 
the way we set it up is that they have they have free range to talk as long as they want. Uh, but for the really young ones, um, we do have an amazing mentor. Uh, we adore and we call her the, the toddler whisperer. She can sit on a Zoom with a three or four year old kid. She actually mentors two kids. She can uh, sit with a three or four year old kid and keep them engaged for 30 minutes. I do not know how she's doing. I mean, I, I watch uh, some of the videos, but she's incredible. Uh, but really mainly it's, it's about um, figuring out how to, to build a relationship. Yeah, I mean, they, if they're talking with the children over different occasions, I assume that they, they have this relationship ongoing on their likes, on subjects like a continuum of uh, conversation with somebody you trust and are getting to know really well. Exactly, exactly. So um, that's, that's very true. And really the relationships that they're, they're developing are, are super fun. So what is, what is your long-term vision for Elder AI? What do you want to, now you're building this community, where is this community going? Yes, we believe so much in the power of bringing people together. We think that a lot of the issues that we have in society today, starting with division, with political division, with migration, with poverty, with climate, with educational um, lack of, of access to education, can be fixed through human relationships. We firmly believe that. And you know, when we look at human relationships, we don't look at group relationships. We believe and we value one-to-one -one relationships the most. And um, what my co-founders and I feel very strongly about is that over the past eight months, we've cracked the code on that because you know we always match people who would have never otherwise met. Uh, so we never match people in the same geographic area or many other indicators that we see. And that is what creates a strong relationship having the spark and the curiosity to meet someone who's not like you and learn about them in a safe environment is creating positive ripple effects in their communities already. We're seeing that. So our goal is to make Aldera available to millions and hundreds of millions of kids and mentors around the world. Um, and we're so excited that it's not just my co-founders and I building this. But our entire mentor community raised their hands and offered their life experience, their expertise to help us accelerate this goal because they know how good it is for them, for the kids and for society. Yeah, to get more people involved and to just show them that there are options out there. I mean, this is um, what we try to do is to just ourselves is to show people that there are so many beautiful options that people can explore and still contribute to life, to uh, having other people, children learn at, I mean, in your cases with children, which is so important. Um, I wanted to ask you something that I think, or you, I mean, people will be curious about, is there a cost to it? So that's a great question. Joining Eldera is uh, free for both sides. Um, we are, putting together something uh, that we're launching actually this month, we're very excited about, um, is a paid forward model uh, where um, you always have the option to, to pay it forward to the next members and the next groups that join. Because fundamentally, the values of Eldera are entrenched in generosity, gratitude, connection, learning and legacy, but all encompassed in joy. Uh, so everything that we do at Aldera is respectful to those values. Um, and, and that is why we committed to making Aldera available to everyone. Um, and, uh, and we're counting on the generosity of, of the members who, who can to support this mission. That's amazing because it's inclusive in the sense that those who can will probably pay forward and those who can't um, will just benefit from you being able to do this um, at no cost for them. Mm -hmm. um, I also curious because the, you are going to expand into other countries eventually, as you said, right? For the mentors, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for the kids. And how about other languages? 
So for right now, we're just looking at English because all of our mentors are here. Um, however, as we expand more, we're going to open it more. Now, what I have to say about our American mentors that's very interesting is that the cultural differences with other continents are so beautiful that our mentors don't even realize how much value they're providing. You know, we have uh, parents signing up um, from Asia and they're looking for a warm grandparent figure for their kids. Um, and, you know, mentors in the US are seen as open and warm and creative. And they, parents want to, their kids to be exposed to those things that sometimes are not that readily available in their own cultures. So as we expand, those are going to be some beautiful things that we can, we can, um, you know, investigate and, and see what are the intrinsic values that, that we see in different um, communities and how do those um, kind of build upon each other. That's amazing. I love the fact that uh, they call um, the difference in cultures is coming at play, as you say, like learning other values and the openness. And there is something very American about being open to concepts. I think um, US and European, I as a Mexican, myself as a Mexican have seen that, that it is true that America has gone through a crazy four years, but there's something about the country and its openness to new ideas that is very accelerating to this day. Um, and I wanna invite people, anyone in, our, in the call today to ask any questions to Dana. I know that I've been asking everything that I wanted mm -hmm. to know about, but I'm sure that other people might have other questions for you. And while they formulate their questions, I am going to ask um, something more in terms of right now we have the pandemic that is keeping everything um, offline. Do you have plans for when we come one day because we will come out of this? Um, will there be an in real life model that you be able to do or is it always gonna be an online format? Um, you know, those are great questions that, that we're, we're kind of thinking about right now. Uh, we will always, always have a global online format we actually uh, believe that a big value of Eldera is connecting people who would never meet in real life because that opens you up to new ideas and new perspectives and new ways of seeing life. And that's incredibly important to us. So I'm not sure if we're ever going to have a live component. <laughs> However, for sure, we're always going to have an online component. And you know, one of the things that the pandemic is creating is um, an openness to developing relationships, just like you and I met, just like Tariq and I met, um, relationships that might just be a, a melding of the minds. And it doesn't have to, um, it doesn't have to mean that we break bread together, but hopefully we do one day. <laughs> well, it's just, um, it's, it's just what's interesting also when we talk about older generations is the fact that there's this notion that they don't, Sometimes there's the ageist or this uh, stereotypes about how, oh, they wouldn't know how to do this or that. Mm -hmm. And with the pandemic, so with the pandemic has shown everybody that they are just as aware, they know how to get on Zoom. Um, I know my mom is, has like a PhD in emojis on her WhatsApp. And it's just so strange when you talk to people that they, I mean, it's changed a lot. And I'm happy that in that way, the pandemic has shown people that we're able to get online, even the kids with their parents to meet a mentor all across the ocean. Um, so how many about how many sessions do you have going on every hour on the hour? <laughs> we have sessions seven days a week. We have conversations going on the entire uh, US time zone. Right, oh always US time zone. But like, let's say if, if we have a 5 p.m. Eastern time session in New York, that might be 7 a.m. in uh, South Korea, um, you know, and uh, the kiddos are just starting the day. Um, so, you know, we have hundreds of sessions um, a week. Um, 
really, really getting up there into, into the thousands. Um, so we're just uh, keeping track of all the conversations that are happening and, and troubleshooting with anything that may come up. Um, but luckily we rely on technology that has now been really, really well tested. Um, and, uh, and our team has learned how to slowly remove all of the, the shyness and the trepidations around both the conversations and the technology. And, and that's, that's a testament to our very strong onboarding uh, process that, that we implemented at Aldera. Well, I, this is one of these products that I wish I could try, but I'm a couple of decades too early. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Neither it's okay. I, neither do I, obviously. I know. I mean, it's, um, I, I kind of love that in this sense that it's always, the, it's usually the reverse. But you've created an amazing space for elders, um, for them to share and impart their wisdom. I really love what you're doing. Um, I can't wait to in 20 years be able to do it. And I want to encourage everyone who knows, even if you're in Canada or in countries that are not the US, if you know children that would want to meet with elders, you can still sign them up wherever you are, as long as they speak English. So that's super important. And I'm sure that eventually, please do come to Canada first. It's very close to the US. And um, I hope um, to see you soon again online <laughs> for a social hour. But thank you so much for your time today, Dana. And um, I look forward to seeing more amazing stories about this intergenerational exchange and really intergenerational. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on. Uh, what an honor to speak to your community and what a joy to speak to you always. Uh, yeah. So to be continued. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to find out more about us, um, check out our website, eldera.ai, and we look forward to welcoming people. Thank you, Dana. Have a lovely uh, day in New York. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.